Welcome to SST College of Arts and Commerce. You're watching SST Edupedia. I'm Assistant Professor Varsha Savlani. In this video, we will look after the topic called data processing. Data processing is the next step to the data collection. This topic is for MCOM Part 1 SEM 2 students and SYBAF SEM 4 students. So what exactly the data processing? After collecting the data, as it is that data we can't use for the analysis purpose. Therefore, we must process that data. So processing of data includes five steps or we can say five stages like number one, editing, number two, coding, number three, classification, number four, tabulation and number five graphical presentation if we say steps stages so we need to say in sequence we need to remember in orderly form only so data processing is required for the purpose of analysis and interpretation as i said we have to collect the data after collecting the data we need to process the data why for analysis and interpretation purpose now as we discussed there are the five steps now let's look each step one by one the first step or the first stages in the data processing is editing now editing is nothing but it is a process of checking the errors and omissions in the data collected whichever the data we have collected in that data if there are certain mistakes if there are errors if there are omissions if something is omitted if something has skipped so that errors and omissions we need to rectify in this editing part now the researchers can do two-way editing that is two types of editing includes field editing central editing if the researchers while collecting the data at that point they have looked after the respondent has not filled or not answered any question so at that point of time only the researcher may ask again the respondent to complete the entire questionnaire so that's called field editing on field the researchers are asking from the respondents only to complete it entire question but when the respondents are very large in number and at that point of time if it is not possible for the researcher to ask each and everyone to check the forms and ask everyone at that point of time the researchers does central editing means office later on after collecting entire data in the office they are doing the editing by reviewing the previous answers and based on the assumptions they are completing the unfilled answers unfilled questions so that's called office editing or we can say central editing okay so this is the first step in data processing the second step in data processing is coding once we have collected the data now for doing the analysis purpose first we need to convert that entire data into a codes Especially when the data is large in numbers, at that point of time, we require to convert in codes. The codes may be in the form of numbers, may be in the form of alphabets, may be in the form of alphanumerics. When I say numbers, it means 1, 2, 3 and so on and so forth. When I say alphabets, it includes A, B, C, D, so on and so forth. When I say alphanumerics, a1, A2, A1, uh, B1, B2, etc. Like the students are getting the roll numbers in the college or schools. Wherever we are purchasing the vehicles, we get vehicle number. We have the pen card number, which is the best example of alphanumerics. We have the Aadhaar card number. Each and every person has the Aadhaar card number. That's the best example of numeric codings. So, even the government does the codings, even the researcher when the data is too large, 
which will be difficult for the analysis purpose so they are converting the data into a codes the codes may be numbers alphabets or alphanumerics that's the second step the third step is classification classification is nothing but dividing the data into a groups and subgroups for example the different categories of information we have taken age group gender wise educational qualification income group occupation wise etc now we need to convert that data into a groups into a classifications for example if we take example of age groups we can convert that age groups into a children teenagers youngsters then middle age senior citizen means in our respondents for example there are 1000 respondents 1000 respondents are there so out of 1000 respondents how many are children say for example 200 are children say for example 300 are teenagers 100 are middle age 200 are senior citizens so on and so forth so what we are doing the one factor for age we are sub dividing or sub categorizing so based on the sub groups the another example for example income if we take income as a we need to categorize that income so we are bifurcating into a four uh, so for example in our research there are 1000 sample 1000 respondents out of that for example 200 belongs to a lower class 300 belongs to a upper middle class 200 belongs to a lower middle class and rest belongs to a upper class so what we have done income we have divided into four sub category upper class upper middle class lower middle class lower class so that is called classification classification is nothing but groupism of the data next fourth step is tabulation to convert the entire data into a tables form when i say tables means i mean to say the rows and columns it is easy to read the rows and columns rather than sentences so we need to convert the data into a tabular form for the analysis and interpretation purpose like from the childhood we get the time table in tabular form because it's easy to read it easy to remember we are not getting the time table in sentence form write down on monday the first lecture is so and so we are converting that data into a tables because it's easy to read the tables easy to calculate if we take example the software of microsoft called excel when we open the excel sheet it's already in the tabular form it has the columns it has the rows when i say columns means vertically when i say rows means is a horizontal arrangement so vertical horizontally we are keeping the information and that tabulation when i am collecting the data for example from the 5 or 10 respondents i can make the manual tables also on paper but if i am collecting the information from thousands i need to analyze the thousands of uh, people so i need to use the mechanical tabulation that is maybe the excel maybe spss model i can use in my study so for making the tables we need to consider certain guidelines certain principles of making the tables every table should have title what the table is whether the table is belonging to a age group whether the table is belonging to a gender whether the table is belonging to occupation or the table is belonging to a number of sales in a specific territory in a specific area so every table must have the title the numbering of the table suppose in my thesis what is thesis the phd the students those who are doing the phd they have to make the thesis of 300 to 500 pages for example so in their thesis in their project report they have say for example 80 tables so they have to number 1 1.1 1.2 1.3 2.1 2.2 .2. like in first chapter there are the 16 tables for example in sec second chapter there are the 12 tables in third chapter there are the 10 tables likewise 
1.1 to 1.12 then uh, 2.1 to 2.10 likewise every table should have the number in a specific research report or in a specific thesis then units of measurement whatever the numbers we have written whether that numbers are someone's age or the units are maybe in rupees or in millions in billions in trillions or maybe in certain if we have written the measurement in kgs in liters etc so units of measurement should also mentioned about the column about the column heading next sources of data if we have collected the data from other sources for example if i am referring the monetary policy of rbi and i am mentioning crr rate slr rate so i have to mention the sources from where i have collected the data from where i have collected the table then column heading each and every column must have the headings for example if we are writing the time table we are writing in the column monday tuesday wednesday till saturday likewise then row steps now row steps is nothing but again rows ka heading dena hai uh, in in time table we are giving lecture 1 lecture 2 lecture 3 break lecture 4 lecture 5 lecture 6 so on and so forth so even row must have the heading then placing of columns should be proper overlapping nahi hona chahiye ek column dusre ke upar column pe aa raha hai that should not be done the placing of columns should be neat and clear it should be visible then we can see separation of columns if the column is separated from the other the subdivided columns should also be there in the tables then alignment should be proper displaying of the data should be visible aisa nahi ki kuch information hide ho rahi hai then there should not be no any empty cell in the table okay every cell should have the content like in columns they should have the headings also in rows they should have the stops also so neither of the cells should be empty in the table okay so these are the basic guidelines or the basic principles if the researchers are converting the data into a tables not called tabulation this is the fourth step the fifth step is graphical presentation now it's time once the data is converted in tables we can easily convert the data into a graphs even with the help of basic software called microsoft excel we can convert that tables into a bar chart pie chart line chart histograms etc so graphical presentation is nothing but visual display of the data symbolic display of the data like in bar chart there are the bars in line diagram there are the lines as the symbols in pie diagram there are the slices as the symbols so whenever we are displaying visual the data that's called graphical presentation so graphical presentation may be through various graphs like histograms bar charts pie charts line diagrams etc so these all are the five steps of data processing editing coding classification tabulation graphical presentation thank you for watching